Sydney Lunja. Versão brasileira, Chu TV, São Paulo. E agora com vocês, Walter Sidney. Ouça o um recado do tio Walter, aqui hoje, em Sidneylândia. Está sendo muito gostoso ter vocês aqui sempre e trazendo um pouco dos quadrinhos, tanto do Brasil como do mundo inteiro, relativo a Disney. E olha só que interessante. Me vem à mente um grande artista. Hello, I am Don Rosa, and you watching Sydney Land Show from Chut TV. Olá, amigo da Chut TV. Eu sou Davi Júnior, membro do grupo Esquilos Cans e fã de quadrinhos Disney, especialmente a arte de Don Rosa, a quem tive o prazer de conhecê-lo num grande evento de quadrinhos que ocorreu em dezembro de 2014 em São Paulo. Foi assim intenso o encontro. Adorei muito. Agora nós vamos saber tudo sobre a saga do Tio Patinhas, contada por ele mesmo, Dom Rosa. Hello, I'm making my entrance into my own studio. Who are you? What are you doing here? Oh, it's David Jr. Oh, but this is... Oh, sorry. Did you want the lights on? Is better? Um, anyway... This is a my studio. I've been meaning to film this somehow for somebody's website for years. And now that David is here with his nice camera, I thought we'd give a cut. Well, as readers already know that I was born on June 29th, 1951, I started drawing at the age of 11, and that through my sister's comics, I got to know the work of Carl Barks. I want to use the Sydneyland show to comment on some facts that happened in 2023. Recently, I wrote on my Facebook about it. I have not commented on this banning of two of my stories other than to keep trying to correct the various misinterpretations of what I had accurately reported in February. The fact was always that the two stories were banned, not that a possible ban was being discussed. The only attempts at discussions were on the part of the publishers who first told me of the situation and who thought they could reason with the licensing company. The obvious preference was to continue to use the two stories, but with a disclaimer as is often done with other comics or movies or TV shows of a similar nature. The licensing corporation does this very thing with its own productions of the past. But that corporation's American home office has no interest or respect for comics, so refuse to discuss the matter. Furthermore, the licensed publishers are forbidden to mention the situation to their readers or publicly mention it in any way. They are only allowed to state that a new reissue of a book has been edited for content, but cannot be specific as to exactly what has been changed or omitted. There is no discussion of the matter allowed, or at least none given any credence. So here is the situation as it was, is and as it will remain. The Dream of a Lifetime has only three panels of its 25 pages in which Bombi appears. Rather than ban this entire story forever due actually to only two of those three panels, the publisher suggested that I allow them to have Bombi redrawn. I would not allow art tampering if my name is on the book. I can tamper with my own art in reprints if I made some error, but I won't allow changes forced on me. So I suggested that in those two panels that were causing the banning of the entire 25-page story, that Bombi appear as he did in the first panel of the sequence, as a featureless black shape, like the phantom blot. Who or what Bombi is has asterisk nothing asterisk whatsoever to do with the plot of the story. Only that he represents something or someone whom Donald remembers and is causing him to panic. O personagem Zumba, ou Corongo, que o artista comentou, foi criado por Carl Barks em 1949 na história Voodoo Hoodoo, representando um zumbi que perseguiria eternamente o tio Patinhas para que ele nunca se esquecesse do que mandou fazer com os aldeões africanos apenas por interesses financeiros. Hoje, considerado racista, Zumba será banido dos quadrinhos Disney em que aparece, mesmo sendo concebido há 75 anos atrás numa outra época. The 11th chapter of the life of Scrooge's is rather a different problem. Bombi is the central character of that most important chapter of the series. 
Chapter 11 in literary Shakespearean terms is the climax of the Uncle Scrooge's life epic. Chapters 110 are the rising action. Chapter 11 is the climax to everything. Chapter 12 is the falling action, leading to the final scene, completing the narrative. As such, any future publications or reprints of the collected Uncle Scrooge's Life series as a book unto itself are now impossible. As regards reprints of the Don Rosa Library, currently in print in numerous countries, Volume 5 will either no longer be reprinted or there will be 25. 30 missing pages due to the banning of The Empire Builder from Calisota and my discussion of the creation of that story. In its place there will be a bonus feature of something. Perhaps storyboard script pages from, obviously, one of the asterisk other asterisk Uncle Scrooge's life chapters. The tricky part will be how the publisher can explain what's going on since no explanation is allowed. They can only state something like, this is a reprint of an earlier edition. Some editing has occurred. That's all. My original preference was that Volume 5 simply no longer be reprinted, or be reprinted with expurgated content, but without my name and texts on or in the book. That would result in there being a Don Rosa Library Volume 1, 4 and 6, 10, and an Uncle Scrooge and Donald Duck Volume 5. But I was convinced that would make Duck fans, as well as the licensed publishers, less happy than the other idea of replacing the band story with some bonus feature. Not allowing that entire volume of the Don Rosa Library to ever be reprinted would be as extreme and unreasonable as the original problem. But of course, the readers of the Don Rosa Library are adults and not stupid ones. They will know what's going on. So, I guess that's the best option. And there you have it as well as my last word on the matter. Já voltei. No próximo programa, vocês saberão quem será o convidado.